Welcome to Moonstone Mountaineer, where we like to find the gems amongst the wilds. My name is Gina, and I'm very excited to have you here, especially for this very special episode in a long series of Yosemite-related videos. This is my final ode to Yosemite after living in the park for over a year and a half. And while by no means would I consider myself an expert, I do believe that the knowledge that I have gained over my time living in this national park is well worth passing on to others before I leave. And so, without further ado, let us first begin by exploring places to stay both in and outside Yosemite National Park. Alright, to begin with, let's go ahead and look at what we've got going on inside the park. Of the millions of visitors that go to Yosemite National Park every year, a majority of them are going to go to Yosemite Valley. Yosemite Valley is sort of a hot spot with most of the main attractions of the park all congregated in this one central area. You've got El Capitan, you've got Half Dome, there's Bridal Veil, Yosemite Falls, etc. So when it comes to picking a place to stay inside the valley itself, I would like to begin with going over Curry Village. Curry Village offers tent cabins as well as a few regular cabins. If you don't know what a tent cabin is, it's basically a wooden frame with canvas over it. If you're staying at the tent cabins or one of the wood cabins, this is actually a great location to be based because Curry Village is right next to the Mist Trail, which, one of, which is one of the most popular trails in Yosemite. There are also several restaurants right there inside Curry Village, which is pretty convenient. I actually made an entire video dedicated to Curry Village itself, so if you're interested in learning some more details, I highly recommend watching that. Next up, we've got the Yosemite Valley Lodge. Here you'll find typical hotel rooms. You're going to be either sharing a hallway or like an outside corridor with people. The prices, in my opinion, are a bit too high, but it is all about location, location, location when it comes to the Yosemite Valley Lodge. Again, there are restaurants right on site and across from the lodge, there's the short hike to Yosemite Falls. Lower Yosemite Falls, and you also have quick access to Cook's Meadow. Now, going up price wise, we're gonna look now at the Iwani Hotel. This historic hotel is honestly very beautiful on the inside. It's right next to the Royal Arches and the Iwani Meadow, and you can also walk over to Mirror Lake from there. Now, from the top end budget-wise down to the low end, let's start looking at the campgrounds. The main three campgrounds in Yosemite Valley that you can reserve on recreation.gov are Upper Pines, Lower Pines, and North Pines. There are no hookups to, at these campsites, however, I think that this is the best deal in the valley. The location of these campgrounds is just incredible. My favorite of the three campgrounds would be North Pines, just because it's settled between the Tenaya Creek and the Merced River. So there's a lot of sites there that border the water, which makes for beautiful views. This is another topic that I have made an entire video about. So if you're interested in learning more about the campsites in Yosemite Valley, definitely check this video out. I'll leave the link in the description. Another campground option would be Camp 4. This is typically a first-come, first-serve campground, and historically it's been a first-come, first-serve campground. However, in recent years, they have been trying to switch that up during peak hours. For example, this last year, you did have to reserve a week ahead of time. This is a historical climbing campground, so this is a really fun place to see some climbers. It's also right next to the Upper Falls hike. And you can also go to Swinging Bridge from there if you cross the street. A fun little fact about the Swinging Bridge, if you've never been to Yosemite before, 
it is not actually a swinging bridge. Um, from what I've been told, it used to be a swinging bridge and then it got washed out in a flood and they replaced it with a solid wood bridge. Just so you're aware, because a lot of people are excited to see a swinging bridge. There is an incredible view of Upper Falls from that bridge, however, and you get to cross the Merced River. And with that, let's move on to accommodations outside of Yosemite Valley and look to accommodations that are still in the park, but not necessarily in this central area. If you're coming from the south, which would be Highway 41, the first thing that you're going to come across when you enter the park would be Wawona. Wawona is another historic hotel within Yosemite. This one, however, and I'm just going to warn you guys because I feel like this is what people are not expecting when they book Wawona. Uh, you have shared bathrooms when you stay here. So you have like a typical hotel, but you do share bathrooms. There's also a golf course here at Wawona, which I am not a big fan of. In fact, it kind of weirds me out that there's a golf course inside of a national park. Um, but if that's your thing, there is one there. There's also the Wawona Visitor Center, as well as a historical uh, village that you can walk through. There's also the Wawona Campgrounds, which does feature a place for um, those who have horses. So there's a horse camp there within the Wawona campgrounds, as well as your typical campsites, no hookups, and flush toilets. Just be aware that if you book in Wawona, the park itself is larger than Rhode Island. You are actually an hour away from Yosemite Valley. Um, and that is a pretty windy road from Wawona to Yosemite Valley. So if you think that you're going to go out on long hikes or all you wanted to see was Yosemite Valley, which again has a lot of the main attractions in it, um, just know that you are booking a place that is an hour away. However, it is inside the park and it is very beautiful at Wawona. If you're coming from the north side of the park, there's Hodgden Meadows Campgrounds. This campground is right next to the entrance on the 120, and it is about 45 minutes away from Yosemite Valley. Now let's move on to the high country, Tuolumne Meadows. Tuolumne Meadows is my favorite place on earth. It is the most beautiful place that exists in my opinion. And I consider myself quite the avid traveler, so that's definitely saying something. Tuolumne Meadows is only going to be open weather permitting, and typically its open season is the summer months. Tioga Pass is very high elevation-wise, so it definitely has to close during the winter months due to inclement weather. So if you ever get a chance to stay up there in one of their campgrounds, which these campgrounds only have pit toilets and I know that they have no running water, uh, if you ever get a chance, definitely stay up there. It's quite the experience. However, it is a bit more rugged. The Tuolumne Meadows Lodge is up there as well. However, it has been closed for many years now. And every time that there are rumors that it's going to reopen, there's always like a large snowstorm or just something that keeps it closed. Uh, so as far as 2024 goes, I don't really have hope that it'll open, but who knows, maybe time will prove me wrong. Tioga Pass, even if you just stay in your car as you drive along that road, is so, so beautiful. I highly urge you to, if you have the chance, depending on what time of the year it is, I highly urge you to definitely at least adventure across the Tioga Pass, even if you're not staying nearby. It's very beautiful, and I feel like a lot of people miss out on the opportunity to enjoy the high country, which is honestly a shame. If you're coming from the eastern side of the park, this is the entrance that you would use. I 
again, would like to remind you, always check the weather before you go on this pass. There is no cell reception up there. And if it's snowy at all and you're not prepared for that, if you don't have chains, you're going to be in trouble up there. Also, Mammoth, June Lake, Silver Lake, Mono Lake, all of the attractions on the other side of that pass, on the eastern side of the Sierras, it's incredible over there. It's it's also very beautiful, and um, I know it's not a part of Yosemite, but if you're planning vacation, I recommend planning to go over there. It's worth it. Now let's focus on accommodations outside of the park. Highway 140 from the west is considered the all-weather road due to its lower elevation. Right outside of the Yosemite boundaries on this road, you'll find Yosemite View Lodge, not to be confused with the Yosemite Valley Lodge. Yosemite View Lodge is definitely deceptive when it comes to the name of their hotel. I firmly believe that they are trying to confuse people when it comes to um, comparing to the Yosemite Valley Lodge. They even named most of their buildings the exact same building. So when you're booking online, if you've stayed at the Yosemite Valley Lodge before, you can easily confuse the Yosemite View Lodge as the Yosemite Valley Lodge. Unlike the Yosemite Valley Lodge, the View Lodge is outside of the park. It is about a 40 minute drive into Yosemite Valley from the View Lodge. Although now that you're outside of the park, you do need to consider how long you might be waiting in line at the entrance station. I do have a video that kind of went over how busy summer of 2023 was. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. I think there's some pretty valuable information on that video. However, I will say that this year, 2024, they're trying something new where they've started a peak hours reservation system. This peak hours reservation system is completely new to Yosemite, so who knows how it will turn out or if it'll even work. Basically, the idea is that on weekends and holidays this summer, um, as well as February for Horsetail Falls for Firefall, uh, they are going to require that reservation to get into the park. While this is most likely a good thing for those of you who manage to get a reservation into the park during these times, I will say that it will make it kind of difficult to plan because it'll be hard to know just what the lines will be like. It might make weekdays busier. Um, I could see that potentially happening. I could also see um, that there's still lines even on the reservation days. For example, in 2022, that was the last year that they had reservations for every single day to get into the park. When that reservation system was in place, there were still long lines to get into the park. So just be aware, it's always best to err on the side of caution. So definitely try to leave early for whatever it is you plan to do for the day. The Yosemite View Lodge has a pizza place as well as a typical restaurant on site and a gift shop that does have some food selections there. Across the street, there's also the El Portel Market, where you can get some overpriced groceries if you're in need. I do like that they have quite a few swimming pools there at the Yosemite View Lodge. That is a pretty sweet perk if you're visiting in the summer. Further down the road, there's also the Redbud Lodge. I've never personally been there, however, I do hear good things. Now, even further down in Mid Pines, which I will say that is an hour away from the park, um, but it is one of my favorite places to stay. It's the Yosemite Bug Resort, also known as the Yosemite Bug Rustic Mountain Resort, but that's kind of a mouthful, so everyone always calls it the bug. This place has a really cool restaurant. Um, the, it's family owned. It's locally owned. I really enjoy the atmosphere here. There's also a spa that's included if you stay, which is awesome. 
as well as some other like spa amenities you could pay for like massages or um i think there's like a bath soak the accommodations themselves are either cabins and those cabins sometimes have themes which i think is fun or it's gonna be tent cabins which again are just like wooden frames with a canvas over it there's both heated can tent cabins and non-heated tent cabins. Once again, I made an entire video on this topic. So if you want to see, um, I spent a day at the Yosemite Bug Resort. That video I think is pretty informative if you're trying to decide where to stay. Down the road in Mariposa, there are a few various uh, motels. I don't really recommend them. Um, I, I don't really hear about them often. They are going to be a little bit better priced, but they don't they don't really stand out. They're just kind of typical hotels. I will say though, it is nice to be in a town where there's like an actual grocery store. That would be Pioneer Market. That's where you'd want to go. That's where the locals go um, to get groceries that are cheaper than anywhere else in town. There's also some fast food, very limited uh, fast food, and some pretty cool local places. Um, I really like the Mariposa Coffee Shop and the health food store there has like this cute little cafe. Um, try the mid-pine sandwich for me, please, because I was obsessed with that sandwich for a while. Okay, down the 41 entrance or exit, if you will, we've got fish camp, basic campground accommodations. Um, we've got the Tanaya Lodge, which is pretty big. Um, I hear good things about the Tanaya Lodge. We've also got down in Oakhurst, we've got the Best Western Plus. I personally have stayed there. I love that place. I stayed there when I was a kid. And actually my partner stayed there when he was a kid as well. Um, there's like these really interesting murals there. There's hot tubs and pool. And it's just really good vibes. As well as, you know, breakfast included. On the 120, sort of like the northwest side of the park... You've got Rush Creek Lodge. They do offer tours at that lodge, which I think is a cool perk. So maybe you're like worried about the parking inside the park, which is honestly a huge issue sometimes. Um, I think those tours are kind of cool. I'm not sure if they're included or not. That would be something to look up. Um, but I do hear good things about Rush Creek. On the eastern side of the Sierras, there are a lot of campground options. Um, again, I always just want to remind people, you do have to go over the pass if you're coming from the eastern side, which can be dangerous, um, depending on the weather, or it could be closed, depending on the time of year. I have stayed at the Silver Lake campground. That was really nice. Um, I know there's some really great campgrounds in Mammoth. Uh, June Lake is amazing. And then, of course, you know, Mammoth is like a ski town during the winter. Um, it's also just a really great place to stay in the summer for going to Yosemite. Again, super, super, super beautiful on that side. So that pretty much sums up my knowledge of the accommodations both inside and outside of Yosemite National Park. I know that I did miss a few things here and there, but I think that's a pretty good beginning to what's around the area. Um, and some personal opinions for you that hopefully will help you in the decision making process. Now it's time to move on to some of the fun stuff I would think. Uh, what is there to do in Yosemite National Park? Join me for part two of this ultimate guide to Yosemite National Park where we go over what there is to do and that includes hiking, that includes uh, different activities, ranger-led activities, just fun things in the area. You're not going to want to miss it. Subscribe and like if you thought this video was helpful and stay tuned for that next part. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Gina and this is Moonstone Mountaineer.